and welcome back to the channel. I, I couldn't resist it. I had to do the mixed media kit this month. Uh, in this kit, there are these three slightly different, kind of the same, but slightly different, uh, wooden tray jolie, tray jolie trees. There's the large one, the medium one, and this smaller one here. And I'm not going to quite put them together yet, but they just slide together and slide into the bases. There is this three pack of Distress Mica, a little baggie of some chunky glitter, some Ranger embossing powder, and a little container of mini prills. I put all of my trees together without any glue holding the two tree halves together or holding it to the base and I am only brushing in a little bit of wood glue at the top just just so that that point will stay together. My trees were going to be getting wet and wood swells when it's wet and then it doesn't necessarily go go back to its original shape size or form and I did not want to try to put swollen wood together. And I figured that any swelling that did happen would be more than enough to hold everything together in the end. All right, to add to add some color to my trees. Now, I like to stain wood. I don't, I don't necessarily like to paint wood and have it completely covered but I do like staining of wood. Uh, I think it really kind of helps add to a vintagey feel. So, and this is why this is why I did not use glue to to hold. Or this is why I put my trees together um, before doing anything to them because I am I am really spraying down my trees. I'm I spray them down a lot with water start trying to to get that wood wet and and more more open to absorbing some color after i have quite a bit of water on them after i've let that water soak in just a little bit i i start my my staining process using the merry mint distress mica from that three pack and then I let them air dry. I did not heat dry them at all. I did not want to use heat with that spray. I did not want to use heat with the wood. So I just let them air dry overnight. And then I took them out and I gave them a little coating of some workable fixative. You could use some clear gesso if you wanted. Um, I like workable fixative because it's not really a wet medium, so you can put it on water reactive items and you don't have to worry so much about them reacting, if that makes sense. Um, workable fixative can hold pencil and charcoal in place in artwork. So I really I really like using workable fixative and it, it only has like a five minute dry time. Anyhow, after my workable fixative was also a set up and had dried, I just made a little puddle of my clear embossing fluid. That's just just, just the reinker bottle for the Ranger Emboss It ink pads. And I used a soft brush and I didn't exactly paint it on thick but I just dabbed my brush onto the surface and and tried to keep it mostly where that snowflake pattern was. And this is one of the reasons why I had used that workable fixative because I did not want this embossing ink to reactivate that oxides or that distress mica spray. And then I just brush or I just sprinkle on, pour on that uh, embossing powder from the kit knock off any excess uh, if there's any areas that I had that they were on the uh, like the tree branches that outer edge tree branch shapey area I would 
just use a small brush to brush it off and then heated everything up and after I had the tree part embossed I came in and I just extended that embossing powder and that embossing ink down to to the trunk of the tree after all three trees were embossed I gave them another spray of workable fixative and this time it wasn't so much to hold color in place but to to give a little bit of grip to the surface of my uh, embossing powder uh, gesso would have worked just fine as well the workable fixative is just faster and especially with all of the fine cuts on these trees the workable fixative does not I don't have to worry about it scraping off my brush and causing buildup on those snowflakes like on the edges of the snowflakes um but I did I did want to add something to that embossing powder for the shiny bobble I think shiny bobble is the name of the blue one in that three pack the bluish tealish one um so I just I just wanted to make sure that 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 shiny bobble wouldn't just slide off the embossing powder as I was shaking up and rolling my distress mica spray bottle and getting that mica worked up in there I was just sort of glancing around my work area and I was looking at my gesso and I was thinking um, to to help hold this mica spray in place uh, maybe if I put a coat down on top of my workable fixative layer uh, it would help it would help hold it in place help give it something to to soak into and so at first I, I had grabbed up my clear gesso and as I was as I was unscrewing the lid I started thinking that gessos are a kind are they're a matte finish uh, mica is a shiny finish I didn't really want to lose that shine so I you I grabbed up the Finnebear liquid color fluid medium that had just come in March's mixed media kit and because it's it's an acrylic and it's it's like an acrylic paint it's kind of shiny still um, I guess that's the best way to put it is it's still kind of shiny so it would help maintain the shimmer and shine of that mica spray so I just brushed it on lightly I do not brush it on thick you can see how how I'm I'm barely touching the end of the brush to my work surface and I am just making long light strokes trying to make sure it stays on the surface and that I don't get any any piles into any of the crevices or any of those details on there and I do I do try to work relatively fast I try to get I try to get the all of my surface covered that I want covered with that fluid medium and then I spray my my distress mica on top of it and and kind of hope that it soaks in and that that fluid medium grabs a hold of that color and to help hold it in place even more to keep it from dripping back off while drying I I I, I use my heat gun I don't hold it close I do use it on the low heat setting I don't I don't really want to completely reactivate my my embossing powder underneath and I don't want to create bubbles with that fluid medium but I do want to keep my my mica spray from just running off and all of that is dried and all of the the liquid color fluid medium and the mica is dry and I am just coming back in with my clear embossing ink and a brush and finishing out the base of the trees um, evening out the trunks and just creating a more even coverage with that embossing powder
had taken my trees out and I had given them a, a very good coating of workable fixative uh, to try to make sure that all of my surfaces, the top, the underside of the branches, that everything had a good coating on it because for this part, for this decorative part, for adding the glitter and the mini prills, I did not want anything reactivated. I didn't want my glues or any of my, my clear mediums that I come in and use to reactivate and no longer be clear. So you can see, and this is how, this is how I really, really made sure that, that I had a clean surface to work on is after, after my workable fixative had dried, I, I am giving all of my trees a spray down. I am really, really rinsing them off. I am making sure that there, there is not going to be any loose colors on there. And that right there on, on that paper towel, that was all of the runoff from all three trees so i think i i did pretty well on making sure that my workable fixative had had covered everything good i wiped off any of the excess water basically hand drying my trees the best i could and then just came in with my heat gun on a low heat setting and finished getting the dampness gone for the decoration using using that glitter and those mini prills I wasn't entirely certain how I wanted to attach everything what I wanted to use it just seemed to me like using a glue or using um, like some Judikins diamond glaze or um, I can't think of it. Ah, glossy accents the glossy accents uh, I would I would have to brush it on anyhow uh, it's kind of drippy but then I start thinking about any clear paints I had and I had I had thought about using that that Finnebear liquid fluid color medium again but I decided against that it's it's flat so I grabbed up some crackle paint well I grabbed up the crackle paint uh, that was in September's kit, September's mixed media kit, and the the Deco Art Crackle Glaze that was in August's kit. I think it was August and September. I know they were right next to each other this year. Um, there is a little bit of difference. The crackle paint is a little thicker which I preferred for doing this part because, well, it was thicker, so not as runny. It, it would hold on to that shard glitter a little bit better, I thought. So I started, I started with just a layer of the crackle paint and I would brush on my layer of crackle paint. Um, I tried to keep my trees laying down at first because I, I didn't want the paint to run down, but that Distress Crackle Paint actually is thick enough and I wasn't putting it on super thick. Um, it wasn't super thin. I don't, I don't really know how to explain it. It wasn't super thin. It was just thick enough to grab a hold of that glitter glass or that shard glitter. And I just dabbed it on where I wanted it and and then I would sprinkle on, uh, sprinkle on the glitter on it. Well, I would use that little spoon there to kind of spoon the glitter onto it. And then while it was still wet, I would sprinkle on some of those mini prills. After all of that crackle had dried with all of the glitter and 
and those mini prills on it had dried. I gave it a light coat with some triple click, triple thick clear glaze and that is only on the tree section right now and that was just to to give a little extra external adhesion to that glitter and those prills while I reworked the base. Um, some of that embossing powder had had stuck to my fingers um, probably because of the workable fixative underneath it uh, and the other mediums underneath it and getting re-wet underneath. Uh, I was going to be coming back anyhow and adding some some more to the base so it wasn't really that big of a deal. Uh, so for this part of the base I I, uh, I, I didn't know how I know you can put uh, embossing powder on top of texture pastes. Um, I'd never tried it on top of a crackle glaze before but I figured it would either crackle or it wouldn't and uh, it would be an experiment and regardless I would get a result that I liked so I brushed on some of that deco art crackle glaze uh, all along the base and the tree trunks and where the base of the tree is um gave it a good coating of that glaze added on my embossing powder and then set all three of those trees off to dry i did not i did not try to heat the embossing powder on top of wet crackle glaze uh that just i knew that wouldn't work so i let it dry completely let it completely uh air dry uh which is why i have it on a tray right now to work so that i would be able to move it out of my way uh and just let it finish air drying now, I don't know if it crackled underneath. Didn't really show up uh, through all of that um, embossing powder. But I didn't put that glaze on thick because I didn't want it to just flake off anyhow. Uh, since it was on top of embossing powder. So, I don't know. I don't know what it looks like under the embossing powder. I just came in and started heating it up and melting all of that embossing powder. And regardless of what was underneath, it did actually kind of create this really cool bubbly effect. I don't know if it was because of the the glaze or the embossing powder underneath that first layer. Uh, but it came out kind of cool looking, so I'm happy. So now, now th these are done. This is the end of my tree project. Um, I am actually going to go out though and, and I will be, I will put on another, a, a pretty good layer this time around of that triple thick, uh, Krylon glaze just to add some protection and some extra shine and some extra adhesion to that glitter and those prills and some protection to the embossing powders. Uh, I just I just want to wrap up the video and so all all of my pictures should have the the glaze sprayed on um I just I couldn't go out and do it today or I couldn't go out and do it the day that I was recording because it was an entire day of rainy drizzle and besides the fact that that triple thick clear glaze doesn't work in humidity well it gets foggy i have to walk um i don't know 50 yards or so 20 i don't I, i'm not good at that kind of distance i have to walk a bit to get out to my barn where i do um my spraying at so i didn't really want to take my trees through the rain and it was it was going to be raining all day and i didn't want to wait and and wait to finish up the video anymore so here they are um just picture them a little bit shinier the photos on the blog will have them with the final coat on so the the photos do show the fully finished product i hope that i hope that you enjoyed this little project and that it gave you some ideas of what you can make with 
your mixed media kit this month. You don't have to make all of your trees the greenish color. You could make each tree a different color from the pack. Whatever you want. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thank you and I will see you again next week. Bye.